So, uh, COVID-19 is a disease that's caused by a new coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, and it is the talking point of the world, never mind the United Kingdom. Um, the reason it's the talking point is because this is a, a, a severe respiratory infection. Uh, this is a virus that uh, infects humans at a very high level uh, in, in terms of how transmissible it is. What we see is, uh, is an elevated temperature, a fever, that's very quickly followed by a persistent cough. And a very small percentage of the population, that will then progress to severe infection, uh, which is bilateral pneumonia, where both lungs are, are, are affected by the virus. And then that has led to the large number of deaths that we've seen reported in the news. Um, why this virus is so serious <clears throat> is because it's new. It's new in the human population. This is a virus that has been circulating in some wild animal reservoir, most likely bats and some other mammals, and it's jumped the species barrier into humans. This isn't the first time this has happened. It happened with the SARS outbreak in 2003. Uh, it's the reason behind the 2009 influenza pandemic, and, and also things like Ebola. Um, the reason I'm talking about this, my name is Professor Alan McNally. I'm the Director of the Institute of Microbiology Infection here in the College of Medical Dental Sciences at University of Birmingham. My current research interests are antimicrobial resistance, but uh, for a long time I worked on influenza and I worked in the government CV and influenza lab uh, and I, I actually worked on influenza during the 2009 pandemic as well. There's lots of research going on into the virus at the moment uh, and it's absolutely essential research. There are multiple things that we don't know that we need to know. We need to know things like what's the infectious dose of the virus. Uh, there's lots of research going on at the moment to try and determine how long the virus, for example, will persist on surfaces. Um, we need to know why children don't show symptoms. We need to know why only certain members of the population, such as the elderly and immunocompromised, seem to be uh, more susceptible to infection. So there are lots of unknowns. It's very important that we have the time to do this research and we have the funding to do this research while the outbreak is going on. It's absolutely crucial. There are lots of urban myths going around at the moment about how to treat coronavirus, how to keep yourself safe. Um, one of those is actually about drinking tea because there's been some suggestion that the virus can't survive above 26 degrees centigrade. That survival uh, data is based on the virus uh, sitting in droplets on a surface outside a human host. Once the virus is inside a host, it doesn't sit outside cells. It will very quickly attach to your cells and go inside them. So drinking tea is not going to make a huge amount of difference. Having said that, there is some evidence from uh, China that during the, the, the highest uh, wave of the epidemic in China, healthcare workers were drinking large amounts of fluid and this was making a difference to their symptoms. That, we believe that's because when the virus progresses from the throat to the lungs, uh, there's a sort of mid phase where it infects the, nas the, the, the nose and, and uh, uh, the kind of nasal parts of the upper respiratory tract. And there is some circumstantial evidence that suggests that if we drink lots at that stage, we wash the virus into our stomach where it dies rather than into our lungs where it can replicate. But, uh, but drinking tea isn't going to really protect you from coronavirus. The best ways to protect yourself are exactly as Public Health England have said. It's hand washing. Uh, really good hand washing technique. Hand washing in hot soapy water for 20 seconds or more. This is not a typical airborne virus like influenza. It doesn't survive in the air for a long time. It's being spread by droplets. How you'll acquire those droplets is by standing two meters or closer to an infected individual while they cough or speak, or touching surfaces where droplets have landed on and then touching your face or your tongue or your lips or whatever. So the obvious way to protect yourself is excellent hand washing technique. Personally, I've been washing my hands every any time that I go out into a public space and touch something, I'll go and wash my hands. Um, I have been wearing gloves on the train. I get away with that because it's cold at the moment. I suppose that might look a bit odd come summer. Um, but the hand washing technique is everything. There's a, lot of inf there's a lot of conflicting information on wearing masks and so on. Public Health England's current advice is that that's not uh, recommended. The reason it's not recommended is because many people really don't know how to wear masks properly. And it may encourage more face touching, which will actually enhance your chances of being infected.